A warm welcome to the corner of adsorption and desorption done by Gaurav Ranjit Boxi, Nikita Jain, Akshat Agarwal and G. Suman. Now let's move on and try to see this world and everything around us in the frame of adsorption and desorption in various forms. So let's get started. Adsorption is the movement of micro or macro particles and hanging out on the surface of another material. Let's see it with an example. Here's all we have is activated carbon, which is considered to be a good adsorbent as it has a tremendous affinity or hunger to attract the adsorbate molecules, that is dust particles in this case. It is because it has significant surface area due to immense number of pores present on it. For instance, let's consider some adsorbate particles randomly moving nearby the surface of an adsorbent. As we can see, the first layer starts filling up eventually with weaker bonds and irrespective of if it's filled, the second layer starts filling up and continues as it is. This is what is termed as the desorption. But here in this case, the interaction leads to the formation of covalent bonds, ligand exchange or anion penetration due to the formation of comparatively stronger bonds between the first layer of the adsorbent molecules and the surface of the adsorbent as compared to that of the physisorption. Hence, this process is termed as chemisorption. So for the next time, when you go to the beach, do observe the sand particles getting adsorbed at your feet. This is a blatant example of physisorption. But if you're planning to have a tattoo on your hand, then be aware as now you know it's a chemisorption process, that is, it's irreversible. So now let's discuss a new concept. M, number of moles, G, gives free energy, give rise to another concept called chemical potential and it is denoted by G by M. Chemical potential is even more fundamental to G. For a chemical reaction, phase change or migration to occur, there is always a mismatch between surface energy and particles. Like in the example shown, a rich person is said to be at high chemical potential and a poor person is said to be at low chemical potential. So chemical potential is a tendency of system to give particles and is dependent on surface energy of driver and the number of particles of driver. Adsorption also occurs due to unbalanced forces on the surface of molecule of adsorbent which are restless while no particles are moving and adsorbate. So adsorbate sits on adsorbent. Adsorption depends on various factors like temperature, pore size of adsorbent, surface area of adsorbent, polarity of adsorbate molecules, number of particles of adsorbent, affinity of adsorbate molecules and many others. So why do you think adsorption occurs? Adsorption is a consequence of surface energy and we will understand and know more about it and understand various application of adsorption further in this video. If we look at the surface of the cardboard, we notice that its surface isn't a smooth surface. So when we write on the cardboard, the chalk powder deposits on the grooves of the board and stays in them. This phenomenon of accumulation of particle on surface is adsorption. Here the cardboard is adsorbent and chalk is adsorbate. Moreover, when we wipe out what we have written earlier, still we can see some traces. So we can conclude that it is physics option as it is multilayered. Have you ever wondered why do we keep silica gel packets with our medals or other household objects? So the simple reason is silica gel's high specific area due to its micro-porous structure of interlocking cavities which allows it to absorb water readily and making it as a useful drying agent. So it protects our materials from reacting with the moisture present in the air. In winters, we observe due due to the fact that window surfaces are at low temperature than moisture present in the air. So water droplets get adsorbed on the window surface and as the time goes, it removes um, automatically. So we can consider it as an example of thermal desorption. When we accidentally touch a mirror, the sweat and oil particles from a hand get attached on the surface of 
mirror. So when we spread like colon, so here in this case the affinity of oil particles is more with the colon than 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 those of mirror surface. So when we wipe the surface, it gets cleaned again. So this is this is the example of chemical desorption. Another common example of adsorption is when we purify water using alum. Alum is a hydrated double sulfate salt of aluminium. During the process of cleaning water, we insert small pieces of alum in the water and leave it for some time. Alum creates precipitate as it cannot dissolve in water. Smaller particles in the water stick to the alum precipitate forming bigger particles. As the precipitate settles out of the water, it takes with it much of the suspended impurities. The adsorption depends on the amount of alum and the pH of solution. pH plays a major role not only in the adsorption process but also in the adsorption capacity. Like many other cosmetics is adsorbed on skin and variations in surface energy causes particles to adhere to variable skin surfaces. Also, lowering of surface tension between material and skin aids in firm distribution and promotes adhesiveness. Another example of adsorption is coloring. Here, the particles of crayon or color pencil stick on the plain white sheet. And this adhesion is a result from the molecular contact between two materials and the surface forces that develop. A bond develops from the adsorption of paint molecules on the substrate and the resulting attractive forces, usually designated as secondary or van der Waal forces. Vacuum cleaner is one of the handiest household appliances used today. Ever wonder how these works? Vacuum cleaner works creating a negative pressure inside which causes a flow of air into it. There are many different types of vacuum cleaner but all of them work on the same principle of creating negative pressure using a fan. Trapping the sucked up air, we use adsorbent to clean and a highly porous material is used as an adsorbent such as activated car carbon. The exhaust air is clean and then it is released. Here the surface area and concentration of adsorbent plays an important role. Here I have shown a simple example of how we remove nail paint using a nail paint remover. It is an example of chemical desorption. Here the affinity of nail paint with remover is more than that of with the nail. So our nail paint gets removed as we apply it. To clean our stained clothes, we apply some soap and the hydrophobic tail of surfactant presence bind with the stain to reduce interfacial tension between the stain and the fabric and then by mechanical agitation the stain is detached from the fabric substrate to form globular structure. I have this double sided tape and a talcum powder. What I am going to do, I am going to put this on the wall. When doing this, when the adhesive spreads, it wet the surface of the wall. During this weak and electrostatic forces between the glue and the surface of the wall forces, this is called as van der Waal forces. Now what I am going to do, I am going to take this paper of the uh, double sided tape. Now what I am going to do is that I am going to take this talcum powder and put onto it. While doing this, we can say is that the rate of adsorption has increased and it was able to hold the talcum powder particles properly. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this talcum powder again and put onto it. You can see that while doing this, there's still more powder left on my finger. Now what we can say is that the rate of adsorption has decreased and the rate of desorption has increased. Here we have bread, butter knife and wedge mayo. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to put this wedge mayo on the bread. When we spread the mayo on the bread, the pores on the bread gets accommodated by the mayo and we know that mayo is absorbed and bread is absorbent. Earwax on earphones. Here I have a cotton swab and my Bluetooth earphones. We can see there is some earwax inside the earphones tip. So what I am going to do is I am going to use this cotton swab and try to clean inside the earphones tip.
after cleaning it, we can see that EFX got stick to the larger surface of cotton swab. And we know that EFX has more affinity towards the cotton swab as compared to that of my earphones. Hence, the EFX get absorbed on cotton swab. Somebody had spit this chewing gum on the floor. Hmm, I got an idea. Let's see what happened when I step on the gum. We know that when the chewing gum was on the floor, it got adsorbed. The affinity of the shoe is more than the gum on the floor. We can see that the chewing gum got stuck on the shoe grip and we can say it got desorbed. Dust on fan or any furniture at home is a very common example for adsorption as we can see over here. Ever wondered why we use broom for cleaning floor? This is because broom has a tremendous surface area which helps accommodating more and more number of particles by adsorbing them. This is a pure example of physics option. As you can see, this colored glass was used by me to pour hot water and as a result is evident. It lost its color due to the high temperature of liquid poured leading to desorption. Why do we use nets in our homes? This is not only to prevent insects entering but also adsorbing more and more number of dust particles as it has a very large surface area due to the four minute lines in each square of the net. As we can see over here, each square of the net has four minute line which increases further its surface area and as you can see when I dust it, the dust comes out. Feeling disgusted with the adsorbed pet hair on your clothes? Same here. Well, I use a metallic brush to get rid of these. That's because brushes have bristles which have very large surface area and hence has more affinity to attract it towards. As we can see over here, the brush is absorbing all the particles and the result is evident. So in this way, we use the brushes for desorbing materials as they have more affinity to attract it towards them. In this example, we discuss about charcoal. We never forget charcoal when it comes to adsorption or desorption. We use charcoal face work very usually, right? Ever wondered why? Well, this is because charcoal has active carbon that has great surface area due to a lots and lots of cavities within. Slowly and slowly, it observes all the dust and oil particles on our face. And finally, when we lift it and check it out again, we are able to see that it got desorbed on the mask. Now, we are able to see a happy face along with the charcoal layers out. Heat can be used for both addition of substances as well as removal of stickers from or off the clothes. This is because the heat provided is used to break the weak bonds between adsorbate that is sticker and adsorbent that is shirt that is between the adhesive bonds formed by using the simple home science techniques, logos and emblems are made in the textile industry. This is a huge application of thermal desorption. Ever wondered why jackfruit's latex is so sticky and even if we use water, we are unable to remove it? Well, the latex is oleophilic, that is, it loves oil. If we use water, it forms cluster with the latex and we are even tied up even worse. But if we use oil, then we can easily remove the sticky latex of jackfruit from our hands and knives as well. This is an example for chemical desorption. Now let's see an example in which we see a man paddling a simple machine which is rolled and as a result friction followed by heat is produced, which is used to clean and sharpen knives and scissors. This is a common example for mechanical that is frictional desorption. Adsorption, all the adsorbed molecules are in contact with the surface layer of the adsorbent. Whereas in multi-layer adsorption, the adsorption space accommodates more than one layer of molecule and not all adsorbed molecules are in contact with the surface layer of the adsorbent. Now I will tell about the 
adsorption isotherm a curve obtained by plotting at constant temperature the quantity of adsorbate against the concentration of the substance in the original gas or a solution which are mainly of three types fringlich langmuir and bet so i will focus on langmuir langmuir made some assumptions for his adsorption model like only monolayer is formed on surface there is no lateral interaction among adsorbed gas molecules or adsorbed gas behave idly in vapor phase according to his model rate of adsorption is directly proportional to the pressure of gas and the number of vacant sites even if the first layer is not filled second layer starts filling irrespective of the first layer if it forms we get the graph as shown below we can see there are three steps of a b and c and c is the saturated condition due to capillary condensation between molecules due to high pressure bet theory or brenner emmet teller explain the physical adsorption of gas molecule on a solid surface and serves as analysis technique for the measuring of the specific surface area of materials assumptions made for bet theory is molecules are adsorbed in multilayer assuming physiosorption no movement of absorbed molecule on absorbent the following graph plots the bet isotherm and shows the relation between quantity adsorbed and relative pressure it's time for vote of thanks thanking you all formally for watching this video thanking department of chemical engineering bits prani hyderabad campus and our special thanks to dr kartik chetan for his spontaneous support we wouldn't have made this far without his guidance thanking you all once again